WLW and the BPA in 14K. Good combination, hard to beat. 24 lane establishment in Harrison, Ohio. It's hard to beat this combination here in our first game. The very youthful Brian Himmler versus the very, very experienced Tom Casey. It's, uh, it's a great matchup to Jen for a couple of reasons. The, uh, the youth uh, will show the aggressiveness. You people have never seen Brian Himmler on TV before. You've seen Tom Casey. Been around for a lot of years. Got a lot of honor award scores, and Jen will go into those later. But the experience, the uh, little less ball speed, little less hook, Tom Casey. Now, hold on to your seats, folks. This guy you're getting ready to look at is 15 years old and stay out of the way. He is very aggressive. He's come a long way just in about two years. Very quickly to the height of his game, perhaps. A little more experience and Again, we do not recommend trying any of these things at home. <laughs> Let's take a look at the release. We'll be talking about it all day, and uh, it is just awesome. First ball of the match, he just rips it. Just brought, look at his arm swings, even out of frame. It's so high now at the bottom. Just maximum lift, maximum turn. The powerful striking ball makes money. So does the accurate bowler with heavy roll just comes down to who can make the most best shots. Picks up the 4-7 cross lane. And this week, of course, we are coming to you from Harrison Bowl. And our representative here today is Rick Nauman. We also have with us Tom Murphy, the president of the BPA, and also Gary Rolfus from Durban Bowl. And he is on the tournament committee should any problems arise, which we don't anticipate. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Okay, rared up on that shot a little bit. The 245 is the shot that we see when the ball goes wide. Again, Brian Henry throws the big, big hook. Powerful turning ball. Also the one that can get you into trouble. Being his first time on television, Jen, what do you think? Hmm. I, I'm, I have no prediction. I'm not going ah, out on a limb. Can't get you. I think that if he can loosen up with a couple of strikes, uh, I think he could be invincible. Yeah. But it's going to be how late is he going to get started. Exactly. Experienced way to shoot the spare. The big hook bowler that can flatten the ball out and throw it hard at the multi-pin spare will make more spares than trying to hook it. A point for you guys at home, you gals that would like to try that. Yeah, I think you're right. I think as soon as he loosens up a little bit, he should be okay. But Tom Casey has had a lot of action already this morning, Jen. Yes, indeed. He had, we had a double roll-off this morning because Kevin Brady and Steve Brock, I believe it was, or no, it was Tom Casey and Kevin Brady who tied and he had to roll off 268. Casey was the winner over, two, over Brady, 232. And then he went on to beat Steve Brock, 216 to 215. So he's got two wins under his belt already coming into this match, folks. So maybe that momentum can carry him through. But again, the um, carry is going to be a factor here, I'm pretty sure. The lanes, uh, lanes are playing nicely, and uh, both players, uh, well, Tom appears to be lined up here, and Brian will be right behind him. Look out. Ooh. Extra coat of lacquer on that pin didn't hurt. Not the usual Tom Casey cover that we're used to, but nonetheless it went. So we've got four spares so far, two apiece, through two frames. I would say any minute now we're going to get a strike. There we go. I hope, I hope. Again, once again, we're uh, our tandem today is normally a uh, the three musketeers minus one today is uh, Tom Brenneman again on special assignment. Uh, we actually think he's goofing off somewhere, but uh, he'll be back next week to join us. And there you see it. Tom Casey splatters the left lane, 10 in the pit. Yeah, Tom, that little beach bum, I'm sure. Of course, yeah. he'll come back saying that he's, you know, worked so hard and yeah. the weather was terrible. But yeah. the Bengals, we'll see. Yeah, well. We'll know. <laughs>
Brian Himmler, right lane. Look out, this is one of the ones you want to see. Again, not the real hard break that we're normally used to seeing. That five pin that fell to the right normally goes flying off to the left to rip the seven out. That's a Wally. And Brian Himmler, that should loosen him up a little bit for the left lane. Both players strike in the third frame. Two pin advantage to the kid. Just speaking of Tom Brenneman, Brian Himmler goes to his exile or his alma mater, Anderson High School. He's in the 10th grade there. Tom will be happy to hear about that. Again, the wall shot again, a slap of the hands with the emotions. You can tell that the kid wants to be in it. Take a look at the score. He just splattered that head pin from left to right, clearing anything and all things that got in its way of striking for the double up in the fourth. Tom Casey's going to try and work on a double of his own here. The Not quite the Wally. Exactly. The, the power is going to be the difference, the big turning ball that's going to throw the pins around and apply the spin. For Brian that carried, did not do so for Tom Casey, leaving a seven pin. He'll shoot this cross lane, Jen. Tom Casey has five three hundreds to his credit. And likewise, Brian Himmler does have a 300 also. <coughs> Brian has on his stats here, he started bowling at the age of three and a half. Three and a half. I didn't think you could even pick up a ball at three and a half. That just goes to show you bowling is for every age. Well, like it I is said, a fun sport. It, it definitely is, Jen. And, uh, and most of the establishments, as we point out one of our tips, uh, um, they have the six-pound balls for the youngsters. And, and I bought one for my son. He, uh, he started when he was four. On his fourth birthday, I got him a ball, and he's four and a half now and still bowling. He's averaging about 52. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he's pretty great. good. Oh, he loves it. Way to go, David. He loves it, really. There you go, Mr. Casey, the accurate shot that you really like to see out of a, uh, a heavy roll player. Left lane, let's take a look at it. This will be the best shot Tom's thrown so far today. Good extension, great knee bend. No deflection here, folks. Ten in a pit, every pin doing its job, and Brian Himmler with a double working up on the right lane. Watch the face on him. You don't think this kid is intense? Look at the eyes. All the way up. It's like... <laughs> boy, oh boy. He's got it. It's just, you, when you're maxed out, it's pretty tough to change something. Take a look at this on the replay. Those eyes are something. Fixed on his mark, he is just, now watch him just grit through the ball, rip the bottom out. It's going to send a head pin, center your screen to the left wall. It comes off the wall, wedges into the four, and then kicks out the seven. That's the big turn. That's the big power. He's Ooh. making my prediction come true, too. Yeah. Look at that, send it to the right, trusting it, just freewheeling. I think we're going to hang you with a Jennifer factor if oh, he doesn't no strike way. on this one here. Ah, the Jennifer oh, factor darn. for 89. Here it is. <laughs> I'm going to unsaddle oh, myself boy. from that one for this year. Just Thro rip 10. Yeah, he actually threw, threw a, a more accurate shot that time, and the power of the ball sent the six pin up and around the neck of the 10. Brian is a two-time Ohio Junior Masters Championship champion, and for each of those years, he got $2,000 worth of scholarship. No kidding. He's got the state high series game and average for the YABA. Huh. It uh, means he uh, has uh, got a couple of bucks on uh, the books at oh, a college of it. his choice, huh? You got it. That's terrific. Dude's buying. If he was old enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fifteen years old. And he's a, and he's a nice, nice fellow. I tell nice. you, I didn't know Brian until uh, all just about a year ago now, and. And he's just a very personable fella. As you can see, folks, he's very aggressive. But Tom Casey, believe me, is just a big heart when it comes to competition. There you go. That's absolutely perfect. 
You know, I watched Tom in the roll-offs, and he was incredible. Every time he needed the strike, he was right there. Watch this on the replay, folks. Seven's going to be the last one out, but it's not because Tom did anything wrong. Head pin goes back. That's the two pin going to the wall, comes off, boom, out of there. And even if the nine pin would have stood, it wouldn't be anymore. Tom Casey, double working. We have a seven pin lead by Tom Casey. The mixer, again, adva advantage Himmler. <laughs> I, I tell you what, you just do not put any more on a ball than he does. Tom Casey's going to have to rely on what has been his forte all of these years, Jen, and that's, that's splitting your target, hitting your mark with a good heavy roll, and, and filling the pocket up. It doesn't look like uh, the lanes are going to yield that mixing strike to Tom today. See it, Jen. Strike up in the six will give Himmler 136, which would give him an eight pin lead. And of course, the all important strike advantage. I think if he can go light, he can definitely carry. Well, he's proven that he's, on three yeah. occasions, yes, and then, and then, you know, filled the hole up and left that ring 10. You're absolutely right. So it's a tough, it's a tough thing to do to try to keep the ball a little light. Uh, you can count on him just absolutely just maxing out look out look hit that ball held from that line he's playing really his carry's got to be pretty good when you get that much on play inside get that much on the ball it's incredible contrasting to the balls where he uh, let out and rolled back and it was a little light he really stuffed it let's see if that was intentional if it was we'll see it again this frame if not We'll see him go a little wide and go for the mixer again, but that was, a, that was just an awesome shot. We have very comparable averages. Brian averaging 216. That's a composite average, and Tom Casey averaging 217. Talk Ooh. about the revolutions. Maxed out. Last frame was a mistake. He tugged it. This is what he wants to do. Give it room. Watch it on the replay. He is going to torque it up, folks. Rips the bottom out of the ball. Sends it to the right. Now give it a little body English coming back. Head pin goes to the wall. There ain't nothing to knock down, Brian. Didn't even need it. Looking at the sheet with the double up. And a seven pin advantage actually becomes 17. Casey with a spare in the seventh. He's got a strike here. Great shot for Tom Casey. Tom Casey, this this is his best strike. He's getting a little better now. Great extension, five pin, second one back in the middle of your screen. He's gonna hacksaw the seven out. Now watch it, now right there, the ball's gonna hit the, the five. There you go, whoom, out of there, seven. It was going anyway, but there was just a, just a little precautionary measure on Tom's part. It's a good place to start to the eighth frame. You get your foundation in the eighth, get one up in the ninth, and it's anybody's ball game. Put a little pressure on the youth, too. That's, that would be a nice thing to do. Mm. Rearing up just a bit at the foul line. Leaves the 2-4 gen on a, on a light hit. And uh, Brian with the advantage of the double and the pins going in anyway, it's going to be pretty, pretty difficult for uh, Tommy to win this match. Uh, Brian's actually going to have to give it to him. Brian's going at a 2-20 pace and Tom, if he strikes out even, can only get to 218. Oh, Brian's going at a 256 pace if he takes it all the way out. You must you must know something we don't, Jen. He's gonna <laughs> leave a ring 10 here or something. <laughs> Have you watched that, this before? Are you just gonna zing me with my factor now? <laughs> <laughs> Tommy's it's a long season to I, be starting that. Oh, I, well, I gotta do it before Tommy gets back because he'll get up with me. What do you think? Yep. yep. He's looking awfully strong. Well, the kid's just just actually doing a great. And when I call him the kid, that's affectionately, guys. Don't you know? Don't get upset at home. 
I like this guy. I like his game. Um, he throws a lot of pins in a lot of directions, and he's going to strike a lot. And he's a remarkably good spare shooter, too, for a cranker. 256 to potential if he takes it out in the 10th frame. Obviously, if he does so, he's completely locked out. Tom Casey. Who and has in that a case, yeah, who would well. go on to meet Steve Miner. There you go. Steve's kind of, does he just automatically get a spot when we come here? <laughs> 7.44 he shot. He earned it. Yeah. There you go. That's the put away. Brian Himmler put this match out of reach. Tom Casey will go through the motions in the 10th frame. Okay, and once again, we'd like to tell you that the women are also qualifying for $200 each week. And today, qualifying will be conducted at Madison Bowl in Madisonville. You can call there to make a reservation, and we'd like to see some new faces. <laughs> Brian just going through the motions once again. He's looking sharp. Steve Miner has got his hands full. I think Brian perhaps is a little bit looser now through one game. Yeah, two. Lots of strikes. 250 That'll would have it. a tendency to loosen you up a little bit. You're, you know, he didn't even look that tense the first two frames, but it, it showed in his ball. His, You're right. His fate now. Look at it roll. Come on. Goodness. Whoa. Well, guys, at the poker game last night, I told you about this kid. They didn't believe me. We have from Kingpin, our top qualifier from Saturday, will be Tim George. And second place was Stan Eaton. And of course, Tim George shot a fine 791 series. Stan Eaton with a 720. And low to cash right now is 603. Jen, I crossed, uh, I was one pair to, to Tim George's right when he threw the series, and that's the, the smoothest, cleanest release I've seen on any bowler ever. I mean, he was wow. just in, he only missed the pocket once in 36 shots. Incredible. He's, uh, look forward to seeing him. Of course, one, uh, you know, like, we make a little fun of Steve Miner when we, <laughs> when we come here, because it seems like he makes a show almost every time. Tim George, likewise, when we go to Kingpin, is is an always predominant threat, and uh, Tom Casey's normally a threat too. But uh, this one is out of here. 208 to 256.